Hi friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Bethany and on this channel we talk about the false beliefs taught to women inside of the church. So if this is something that you can resonate with, go ahead and subscribe to this channel, like this video, share it with a friend and hit that little notification bell so you'll be notified every single time that I drop a video. Okay, if this is your first time here, this is usually not my backdrop like at all. So here's the deal. I um, recorded a part one and part two to soul ties of us learning what the hell is even a soul tie. And I made this big long video and I was like, you know what, maybe I should just put it into a part one and part two instead of making it like a full blown, like huge video. And so that's what I did. So this is the intro to part two, what you will be seeing here in a moment. Okay. I'm actually in Missouri with my family, helping my sister with my niece and nephews. Oh my God, my hair keeps getting in my mouth. Niece and nephews dance recital. More on that later, but I traveled um, and this is the best lighting, which is in the house. So here we are, here we are. It's very vloggy of me. But anywho, I think that's all that I wanted to discuss with you. So without further ado, let's get in to what are soul ties part Two. Here we go. I looked up another video of soul ties, and this video is called What is a Soul Tie and How Do You Know If You Have a Soul Tie? What the Bible Says Plus Symptoms. <laughs> also, I'll blur her face out as well. I haven't looked at this. I haven't seen this. We're going to dive further into this. But again, I'm going to have to blur her face because she's not a public figure as far as I know. Um, and yeah, that's, that's about it. Whether to even make this video because as I was diving further into what a soul tie is and what the Bible says about soul ties, I started to feel like I didn't actually agree with the concept of a soul tie as it is typically defined. So what I mean by that is when people talk about soul ties, they usually are referring to a kind of intermingling of your soul with someone else's soul. And I just couldn't get on board with that particular definition. So when I am talking about a soul tie and using this term soul, I'm referring to those parts of you that go beyond your physical self. So your mind, your will, your emotions, your ability to make choices. I do believe that those things can be very strongly affected by a connection to a past relationship. So my definition is a relational attachment to someone else that affects your mind, will, and emotion. What does the Bible actually say about soul ties? The problem is this term soul tie is not explicitly mentioned in the Bible. And usually the verse that people refer to when they talk about soul ties is the one in 1 Samuel 18, 1, where it talks about the relationship between Jonathan and David, where it says the soul of Jonathan was knit to the soul of David and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. So even though it doesn't expressly mention a soul tie in the Bible, I do believe we can see some principles that show that our souls can be affected by others. In Proverbs 17, 22, it says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a downcast spirit dries up the bones. So I think that there is a continual interaction in the Bible and throughout scripture that shows that our body and our spirit are connected to each other. In Ezekiel 18, 4, it says, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. Your soul belongs to God and I don't believe that anyone else can possess a piece of your soul or that you can lose a piece of your soul to an ex. But you can have a very strong connection with someone that you've been in a romantic relationship to the point where it is affecting your mind, your will, your emotions, and even your choices that you are making. So with that being said, let's talk a little bit more about- That would be called a manipulative relationship. 
more good soul ties versus bad soul ties because I do believe that both exist. God created you to love and to bond and to connect with other people. And there can be good bonds and connections like in the case of a best friend or in the case of marriage when a man and a wife join together as one flesh then that is a godly soul tie and that's a good thing. But when you take that same kind of bond and connection and you tie it to someone that you are no longer in a relationship with and you're still experiencing all of these emotions from that person, that's when it becomes a bad thing and it's no longer a godly soul tie or connection. And these types of unhealthy ties and bonds can actually cause you to be crippled by the emotion and the weight of shame and the weight of the memories of that person. So to give an example from my own life, I once dated someone for a little over two years and when the relationship ended, I couldn't even think about that person, think about him being with someone else without literally feeling physically sick. And that lasted for a very long time. I'm talking years. And that is when it is unhealthy. I actually kept a box of some of the things that reminded me of him and things that he had given me for years later after the relationship had ended. I think I kept it up until right before I met my husband, before I finally was able to release those things and get rid of those memories. So that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about an unhealthy tie or bond with someone from In my opinion only, I don't think that has anything to do with a spiritual tie. I don't think that has anything to do with a soul tie. I think that has everything to do with this particular woman. The soul tie form. I've talked about they can be created from past relationships, but what is it about that relationship that causes this strong of a bond? And I think the number one thing that causes these types of unhealthy soul ties is sex outside of marriage because God created sex to be something that brings you together with another person. And there's a literal chemical. Man. I can already feel like my bot, obviously, my body reacting to what she just said. I can't get over it. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> I'm really uncomfortable with what she just said. <clears throat> Yikes. She kind of told on herself a lot, <laughs> unknowingly. Yikes. <laughs> bond that takes place when you have sex with another person. I don't believe in casual sex because it is such an intimate bonding experience. So that's the number one way for this type of bond to take place. But like I said earlier, I don't think it's the only way. I think there can be a very strong emotional connection as well. So to give another example from my own life, I was in sort of a friend relationship or situationship, I think is what people call it now, where I had a really strong emotional connection with a man who I was not actually in a romantic relationship with. We did not actually ever have sexual intercourse, but it was very difficult when we parted ways for me to get him off of my mind because we had formed such an emotional bond. And I think part of the reason for such a strong emotional bond can be when you are both coming from a place of brokenness instead of health. At the time that I was with this person, he had just gotten out of a really bad marriage and gone through a divorce. And I had just lost my mom. So we were both at a place of brokenness where we ended up forming more of a codependent relationship with each other. But that can be another reason that a soul tie might form outside of having sex with someone. So we've talked about what a soul tie is. We've talked about how they're formed. So how do you know if you have a soul tie with someone? I'm going to share some potential. It just sounds like you made a f friend over grieving the loss of a marriage and your mom. This is, this is a, a problem that Christian people have. 
I feel as though they overthink and spiritualize literally everything. They spiritualize sex. Every time you have sex, it needs to be a very meaningful whatever for God. Sometimes, sometimes no. Sometimes you just want to have sex, you know? And in her case, when she was talking about her friendships, oh, there was a soul tie there, and we weren't having sex or anything, but no, maybe you just made a really good friend because y'all were grieving together. That's okay. Now, obviously, I don't know the whole story, so maybe it did end up being a codependent, you know, relationship, or maybe she just kept a box of things that reminded her of him for a long time. Who knows? You may have, if you have a soul tie with someone from your past. And the first one is obsessive thinking. This is when you cannot get this person off of your mind. If you're constantly thinking about them when you're making decisions about dating, for example, you don't want to move on and date other people because you don't want it to appear like you're no longer available in case they come back into your life. Or the opposite. I am so uncomfortable. My dear, sweet Heather, you are telling your viewers way more things about you than I think you want them to know. Yikes. <laughs> this started <clears throat> with um, a soul tie investigation and now we just jump to being obsessive. You go out and date as many people as you can or sleep around just to hurt that person or to try to get them off of your mind. This was something that I did when I couldn't get over that past relationship that I mentioned. Not the sleeping around part, but the immediately trying to move on to date someone else because I was so hurt that I just wanted a distraction to try to not think about him anymore. So that's definitely a symptom of a soul tie or a strong emotional connection. Or if you feel like you can't move on and you want to meet someone new and you want to get married, but the pain of this relationship is so heavy on you still that you feel like you're just going to be alone forever. So the second symptom t kind of ties in with that. Please, no. Don't, don't, don't do this. Don't do this. But it makes me wonder if you were experiencing the symptoms of a soul tie and you went to a licensed therapist and said, I am experiencing a soul tie with this individual person. What do I do? They would explain to you and confirm to you that a soul tie it's not a thing. I'm not a licensed therapist by any means, but I have a hunch that that's what <laughs> one would say if one went to a therapist appointment and said, I have a soul tie. They'd be like, what is that? And that is the feeling that you are not free of this person. There's still a weight on you. They're still affecting the decisions that you make. They are still affecting your ability to move on with your life. You still have the emotion when you see pictures of them or you hear things that are going on with them. And that would be another symptom that you still have a soul tie with that person. Another symptom would be that you can't let go of them or their things. So I mentioned that with the box of my ex's things that I kept for years. If you find that you're still hanging onto letters or pictures or gifts that they gave you, then that would be a symptom that there is still a strong emotional connection that you need to try to work through in order to move and the last symptom that I'm going to talk about is the constant feeling or need to reach out to this person. You just can't help yourself. You have to check in on them. You have a little too much to drink and then they're the first person that you text or call. You go out of your way to try to bump into them. You check up on their social media. That's another symptom that there is still a connection with this person that needs to be broken and dealt with. You find that any of those symptoms exist and you think you may have a soul tie with someone from your past, I don't want you to get worried or freak out and feel like you can't move on and you can never get married. 
God can heal that and you can move forward from it. But I think it's first important to recognize it so that you know how to deal with it in order to move forward in freedom. Romans 6 14 says, for sin will have no dominion over you since you are not under law, but under grace. So there is grace for that and you can move forward from it. But again, like I said, it's important to recognize it so that you know how to move on and that you can ask God to help you. That's it for this video. She just says to work on it and then gives you a scripture verse. Okay, cool. That was a little entertaining, a little scary, and super awful because I didn't learn anything more <laughs> other than this woman um, might be a little obsessive over some people. Listen, if you're going through all of that stuff, I'm not a licensed freaking therapist, but at the same time, I've dealt with relationships, and a part of ending a relationship, that's, that could be a grieving process. It, you're a part of you, not a part of you, but like a huge part of what you've known is gone, and you have to figure shit out and that is a, can be a grieving process and that is okay however holding on to things for years right before you're getting married is a little weird in my opinion it's a little much now if you are dealing with any of these things and you just can't get over the specific person or whatever find a licensed therapist to help you because there have been men in my life where I'm like, oh my God, I just know that I'm never ever going to get over him and I just can never be happy ever again. Oh my God. And I had single moments. I had single years and it was the greatest time of my life. Not because I slept around or because I, no, because I figured out who the hell I am and what... I deserve in a relationship and then years later I found my husband so this video literally has nothing to do with what I wanted it to do with okay well that video was a disaster okay I'm gonna go I love you so much don't forget to like and subscribe this video like and subscribe to this video I mean this YouTube channel good god um, and hit the little notification bell so you will be notified every single time that I drop a video, which should be every single week. And always remember that you are a fierce and powerful motherfucking woman, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!